Greetings, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Mistake Zone, your weekly dose of our lives and the mistakes within them. My name is Jaron Wade. Joining me, as always, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Matt Alba. Hey, Matt. Yo. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Matt, that's great. We're here. Matt? Mm Mm-hmm. Normally, I say that's great. We're here, but... Mm-hmm. Gotta say, Matt, mm-hmm. summer is over. Oh. We're here, the final night of summer. And mm-hmm. I don't know, Matt, even though we're old men now, brittle old men whose bodies are failing them, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, there's always something so, I don't know, melancholy about the last Sunday, or I guess for us here in Canada, the last Monday evening of summer mm-hmm. where... I'm so far removed that from when these core memories take place, but uh-huh. Matt, uh-huh. two core memories stick out to me regarding the last Monday of summer. Mm-hmm. One, when I was going into the ninth grade, and I watched a whole, whole bunch of CSI on Spike TV, uh-huh. uh, just because at that point, Spike TV, all they played was CSI, let's be real. Mm -hmm. And my second core memory was, I believe it was a bunch of us at a Wendy's all eating before the first day of our respective university and college careers. Oh, man. And remember specifically, uh, just sitting there eating Wendy's with the boys. (laughs) And for some reason, we kept saying, it's okay to cry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's not something we would have said at that time. John, that's also something we'd say at this time. I, Matt, it's always okay to cry. Mm -hmm. Because, Matt, Mm -hmm. I was crying again this week. Oh, no. Just because earlier this week, Matt, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Wario64 posted to uh, let everyone know that the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, you know, X Twitter account Uh updated its social media accounts for the 25th anniversary for the franchise. And, you know, it says right there on their social media pages, the headers, uh, 25th anniversary, THPS. Mm -hmm. Matt, Uh I don't know what, how to describe the feelings I have of (laughs) seeing the words 25th anniversary next to THPS. Mm -hmm. And... After I started vomiting, like after I stopped vomiting and realized that father time is brutal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt, over under, do you think they're going to announce a new entry into the Tony Hawk franchise to correspond with this anniversary? Or do you think this is just for show? I mean, I feel like you wouldn't update it unless you have some kind of announcement to like, you know, go with it, right? Do you think uh, Microsoft will uh, dig into the trenches of Blizzard to pick out the remains of Vicarious Visions and we'll get our uh, THPS uh, 3 plus 4 remaster? Ooh, I could see that. Yeah, I, I mean, m- maybe they'll just do like even more than 3 and 4. But, like, maybe they can do more and more things in the Tony Hawk franchise. Where I... You would think that with the success of 1 and 2 that we would definitely explore 3 and 4 and potentially uh, Underground 1 and 2. And the big hope, I feel, would be to have uh, Vicarious Visions, or at least the remains of Vicarious Visions, actually create their own unique levels as well. Mm -hmm. Where you would hope that if for somehow this is Microsoft's, you know, feel good play for the brownie points for us gamers T- TM mm-hmm. uh, that this would be some sort of announcement. So I'm really curious to see um, how this shakes out. But Matt, uh-huh. seeing the big, scary 25th anniversary, Matt, do you know what you were doing 25 years ago? I mean, apparently playing Tony Hawk on the N64. <laughs> But Matt, N64 version came a few months after the PS1 version. Oh, did it? Okay, I know yes. I did play the the N64 version first, because I didn't have a PlayStation at the time. Ugh, blue, uh, blue cartridge, Matt? I think so, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, re- I definitely remember renting that from the local Blockbuster and thinking, oh, cool, this has this has a unique colored cartridge. Oh, 
I loved me a good unique colored cartridge. Mm -hmm. And I actually can't think of that. I can think of like three, which is like Tony Hawk, yep, uh, gold cartridge Zelda, yep, and I believe Donkey Kong was yellow. Yes, I think the first editions of Donkey Kong were yellow. Uh, I believe THPS two was also a yellow cartridge. Matt. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I specifically remember that there are red and green cartridges for the N64 as well. Oh, but yes. But yeah. none of... I, I mean, with the power of internet... Uh, okay, Matt, I'm just going to search colored Nintendo 64 cartridges because this is great radio. This is a great podcast. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we're still going to be able to do do our first in a while sub-one-hour mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. Matt, but while I look this up, if you would have to guess what a green and a red cartridge and 64 game would be what do you think they would be oh man i don't know why in my head right now glover is red but i'm pretty sure it's not okay but when i'm thinking of a green cartridge i feel like that has to be i don't know if this is just me being biased but it has to be like an army game right Ooh, matt huh so i'm, I'm looking at Someone posted on, when did they post this on Reddit? Two years ago, Mm -hmm. asking, are these all the colored cartridges for the N64? Mm -hmm. And one of the first comments was that they were missing Scooby-Doo. So I don't know what the Scooby-Doo color was. But Matt, Mm -hmm. get ready for some thrilling radio where (laughs) I'm about to list off, let's see, Matt, six times seven, 42, 42 cartridges. Oh, man. Okay. 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 Matt, mm-hmm. Road Rash was black. Mm-hmm. Army Men, Sarge's Heroes 2 was green. Ooh, a black cartridge actually sounds weird to me. I don't know why I I don't remember any black color cartridges. Matt, I'm pretty... Yes, I had the WWF No Mercy was a black cartridge. Mm-hmm. So uh, in terms of red, Matt, I'm looking at... We have Rocket. I believe Rocket Racing was red, but also... Sports games seem to be red, Matt, because Ooh. we have motocross games, an MLB game, and a Spider-Man game, plus NBA Jam. Oh, that makes sense. And uh, Yeah, and an NFL game. But yeah, you were right, Matt. You were right, because Army Men, uh, Army Men Air Combat, Battle Tanks. Oh, Rayman 2 was green, and Virtual uh, Pool was green as well. Mm-hmm. Matt didn't realize THPS 3 came out on the N64, and that's a black cartridge. Oh. But yes, you... We're right. Uh, Earthworm Jim was also yellow. Matt, Mm -hmm. you said Zelda Ocarina of Time was gold. Did you know Majora's Mask and Pokemon Stadium 2 were also gold? Oh, okay. Zelda Majora's Mask, I didn't know. But I remember now Pokemon Stadium 2. Actually, it wasn't just gold. It was gold and silver. Oh. Like it was gold on the front and then it had like a silver on the back. Or maybe it was just gray on the back. Oh, man. Matt, Mm -hmm. Batman Beyond. We had Rugrats, Turok were black cartridges. Um, WWF, uh, as I said, No Mercy and WrestleMania 2000 also black. But wow, some really now this is a blast from the past, and I'm I'm kind of bummed we don't have colored cartridges anymore. Well, to be honest, Matt, I don't buy enough physical <laughs> Switch games mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to figure out if there are colored Switch cases. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I'm totally unsure as well. But Matt. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been up to this week. You know, you know, just feeling a bit bad that summer's over and kind of reminiscing of the Tony Hawk franchise. But mm. what have you been up to this week, pal? Jaren, actually, kind of weirdly, I've been looking on the uh, Steam Workshop a lot. Or not Steam Workshop, the Steam Point Shop a lot. Okay. And, I, you know, like while we're talking about these kind of like colored cartridges, I never knew that on the Steam Point Shop, there are... Like splat, I don't know if splash means is the right word, but like turn on animations for the uh, Steam Deck on there. Yes. And Jaren, now that we're talking about color cartridges, I now really want customized like switch, like turning on animations. Now that like uh, I know that these are a thing. Man, Matt, I, I personally don't haven't purchased anything um regarding a steam start or steam deck startup uh uh, animations but Mm -hmm. jaren i'm surprised i'm surprised because the very first one is just ronnie from elden ring that's getting yep i I definitely see that and i'm definitely going to purchase that (laughs) um afterwards where Mm -hmm. i know for my steam profile i think you did get a few bonus 
cosmetics when you purchased it, and I think that's my border right now. I see, I see. Uh, for my avatar, but not. Mm-hmm. I do like the point shop just because, uh, for some god awful reason, when I <laughs> uh, purchased my Steam Deck, I got like 200k points, so mm-hmm, more mm-hmm. than I'll ever be able to use. Yeah. Uh, so I really just find myself buying like a lot of different backgrounds that I never equipped, mm-hmm, and that mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, sketchy anime stickers from <laughs> sketchy anime games yeah. that I also. Um, should you not not gonna mm-hmm. lie i do buy a lot of sus stickers and send them to my <laughs> friends to be annoying nice uh, i've saved that uh from sending to you but now that i open the floodgates maybe i'll send you a <laughs> awkward <laughs> uh combination of stickers oh, but mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. personally i think that's enough uh, <laughs> padding for now uh in terms of what we've actually been doing playing this week uh, before we get into actually something substantial, Matt, I wanted to run something by you real quick. What's that? And it's sort of another Fortnite check-in adjacent, you know, segment. Okay. But as we know, Fortnite started as a PvE game in yes. a way. Yes. Uh, you know, Fortnite originally this with the foundation of building, your whole goal was to essentially go through, traverse these different maps, select missions, and then um you know basically gather materials and i all have all that have everything you unlock funnel into your essentially your base your storm shield Mm -hmm. and then from there your ultimate goal was to survive waves of husks and monsters where epic has kind of put save the world in the back burner i know it does receive occasional updates every couple of months but those are mostly you know, just kind of balance stuff. Um, the same regular uh, timed events are on a rotation. And I believe just recently they added a new biome, but not not mm. really pushing the story too much just because my whole goal for Save the World was to finish the first area so I can unlock the 30-wave survival essentially horde mission for the first area where you build Mm -hmm. a base and you have to survive 30 waves and that Mm -hmm. my whole goal was to automate that because there are a (laughs) bunch of different afk uh, guides online so you Uh all you have to do is strategically create your base survive all 30 waves and here's the kicker matt Uh uh get your daily cap of fortnite battle royale X, uh, battle pass XP Classic. to go towards your battle pass. And that's all I want to do, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where uh, originally I have... Mo- this is probably going to get us banned, but <laughs> I have my friend's uh, account because he's progressed way further than me mm-hmm. uh, on my PlayStation 4. So every day I would log into the PlayStation 4 on his account, my account on the PC, and then start up his AFK. Uh, but <laughs> uh-huh. I thought... I should probably get to a point where I have my own AFK set up, you know, just in case. Yeah. Um, I upgrade, have to get rid of the PS4 for some reason. But uh, I think the biggest concern would be wh- one day, Matt, they're probably going to stop supporting the PS4. And then I-, I won't have access to a dummy account to let me AFK. Mm-hmm. So uh, I finally took the plunge, Matt, got brought up a guide. I uh, had all my friends who played Save the World give me materials so I could build the base and have higher level traps than my current player level allows Mm -hmm. and i don't know matt remember how you were telling me you know for a few weeks now whether it be shapes whether it be a lot of these automations uh factorio adjacent games and Uh i've gone here on record saying isn't for me Mm -hmm. but matt Uh uh-huh following this guide and then of course this guide was a couple of years old now so given some of the property changes stuff happens Mm -hmm. and i don't know i oddly got into watching the waves unfold (laughs) seeing portions of okay during this wave this happens or they spawn here now instead i need to tweak this i need to add some items that heal my structures here just to help you know support it better oh no during wave 22 
they'll do the tornado. There's a chance the tornado event will happen and the tornado just wrecks my base. I need to change all my brick into steel. Mm-hmm. And Matt, mm-hmm. is this why people like these factory <laughs> games? Jaren, I think so. You know, Jaren, after that episode, after we recorded that episode, I was kind of thinking about it. And Jaren, I feel like the way that I've watched you play gotcha games, you're just like one step removed from automation games, I feel like. Because Matt, <laughs> there's nothing more satisfying to me than getting your build just right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and having it play itself. Because Matt, <laughs> speaking about gotcha games, Nikkei this week, mm-hmm. um, I was... Uh, Luckily, so essentially there's something called tribe towers. It's one of the daily uh, things you can do where Mm -hmm. each of the different manufacturers, uh, you bring in a team of, there are four different towers for each of the manufacturers. You bring a team of those Nikkei only and you kind of climb it. Every time you successfully clear floor, you'll get a mold from that manufacturer and every time you get 50 molds you can exchange it for a chance to get a four star or you know a golden uh five star mm-hmm. uh, nike and that mm-hmm. uh the pilgrim one this is the pilgrim manufacturer is the one with the strongest units and some of the rarer units they have a base pull rate of one percent even if they're the featured nike and that was able to get mm-hmm. from my free pull uh, one of the top tier pilgrims, the original top tier pilgrims, fans of, uh, you know, the mistake zone. The first time I talked about Nike, I dro- name dropped the Scarlet, finally got a Scarlet mat, and then realized, wait, I can't build Scarlet because I kind of went in on all my other oh, Nike, yes. and I have no other resources to feed to her. And mm-hmm. that, the grind mm-hmm. begins anew now. And. I don't know, Matt. Maybe I would <laughs> like uh, Factorio uh, or automation games. Mm-hmm. But sorry, I, I cut off your thought uh, to talk about Nikkei. Jaren, I think that was my thought. Like, I, I can't okay. remember. Like, I remember you, quote unquote, playing. Oh, what was that game? Like, King's something? King's Raid, I think. Maybe. Yeah, maybe King's Raid. And I feel like in all the time that you've played that, at least in front of me, I've never actually seen you play it. I've just seen it running on your phone. I think yes. I actually remember seeing it running on two phones. That, that <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if I did that. Oh, but yes, man. essentially, that is all gotcha games are, aren't they, man? Because mm-hmm. I know if you really want to climb like the solo content, you do have to do manual in a way. You have to time your skills. You have to actually aim. But that, not, not for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not for me. But uh, maybe in the future, Matt, when a new automation hotness comes out, uh, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe I'll dip my toes uh, in there with you as well. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. speaking about hotness, Black Myth Wukong, you went into a deep dive last week. So got to ask, Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, one week later, what do you think of it now with some more time under your belt <laughs> and any new updates you want to share? Jaren, I can honestly say that I have put way less time into Wukong than I thought I would. Because mm. basically about an hour after I stopped playing um, for like our re- recording last week, I hit the point in the game where the enemies aren't the frustrating thing. It's the level that's the frustrating thing. Mm, how so? Um, Jaren, I, I got to an area called the um, Pagoda Realm in... Uh, Wukong. And Jaren, this area encapsulates everything that is bad (laughs) about game design and puts it all into just like one solid place. And I I couldn't stand to like be in this area for to like play in this area for more than like an hour at a time. Alright, Matt, as someone Mm -hmm. who, not gonna lie, was honestly thinking this week uh-huh. Uh, to trade in their PS4 towards a PS5 so they can play Stellar Blade and for some reason Black Myth of Wukong. Mm-hmm. Uh, please tell me about this area because I am officially spooked <laughs> from what you're uh, implying right now. Okay, Jaren, this area is like realistically, if you kind of just like speed through it or kind of like a uh, mainline through it, is maybe only like an hour or two long. But when you kind of go into the the point of like kind of trying to explore everything and make sure you're clearing the area, uh, it it gets like far far longer than it needs to be, 
And Jaron, the issue with this area is that the level is so unforgiving in that Jaron, I, I talked last week about how Wukong is like just littered with invisible walls. And it is like the reason that, <laughs> that Wukong is littered with invisible walls is that they removed all the invisible walls from this area. Because <laughs> Jaron, this area is kind of cylindrical. It's one of those areas that's like cylindrical in shape. Um, like a hollow cylinder where you're kind of like swirling your way up the inside, if you kind of get what I mean. Kind of like if you're kind of like going up like screw threads, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. And, you know, kind of like with how that goes, that means that the full middle is empty. You're kind of just like going around the border. The full middle is empty. There is no <laughs> invisible walls <laughs> to protect you from falling into the center of this level. That's rough. Mm-hmm. Right. Jaren, it's narrow. And um, prior to this point, Wukong has been very open in terms of its map design. The camera does not play nice in narrow areas. Jaren, there, this this area, all of the enemies are they have <laughs> all the enemies have knockback on their abilities, so you're far more likely to get one shot. Um, this this area, way more than any other area in the game, even the ones like after this, is abusing ambush enemies. Uh, Matt, ah, uh, that's <laughs> the worst in these type of games. Uh huh. Jaren, I uh, uh, there is another thing in this area where you know they're kind of like doing the thing where you have to cross a narrow beam, so you have to walk properly, and there's gonna be dudes shooting at you, so you have to turn of on course. like your attacks to like parry them away. Jaren, for the most part, these beams don't have like lock on on them, so you actually are kind of trying to like walk forward properly. And Jaren, there are invisible walls in this area where you wouldn't expect invisible walls to be, <laughs> because there's some parts where kind you kind of like get used to kind of um kind of like traversing between all these kind of like um like kind of big arch doorways, and. There are some that, like, you kind of, like, have to make a jump over to get into, but there are some where it only looks like you need to make a jump over to get into, when in reality, you can't go into it at all, so when you jump, try to jump into it, you just fall to the ground and die. And, Jaren, to kind of, like, top it all off, this area, every, I think it's, like, a bit under five minutes, you go into a frenzy mode (laughs) where you gain increased attack power but you lose maximum hp until it brings you down to like half your original max hp and then when that like rage mode is over and like sure while you're in that rage mode you do a lot more damage but when the rage mode is over you do not regain the health that you lost so uh. <laughs> jared this area is awful also jared to top it all off there, when you're in ranged mode, you can see like these um enemies that you couldn't see before. There is a missable item, which honestly I was kind of ticked when I when I le- learned about this missable item. Um, but honestly, the missable item isn't really that relevant to my build, so I didn't worry about it that much. But you have to kill all the invisible these invisible ish uh, enemies before you kill the main area boss, <laughs> or you miss the item. And one of the last invisible enemies that you face is basically. When you're going to go fight the boss, there's basically like a forked path, almost. The boss is on one fork, and the invisible enemy is way far on the other end of the fork. So there's a very real chance you'll miss the the last version of this enemy. And, I hate Matt. I hate this. Uh-huh. I hate everything you're saying right now. Jared, there was a window that I thought, okay, hey, maybe there's something... On you know on the other side of this window, they wouldn't like put this window here for no reason. <laughs> Jared, there's no invisible wall in this window. When you jump out of it, you just fall into the center of the cylinder and you die. Cool. Oh that, man, that sounds really cool. Oh god. Uh huh. Jared, I still want to play this game, Matt, but uh-huh. that sounds like I'd probably become way too frustrated and yeah. stop playing at some Jared, point. That that whole portion of the level is is or of the game is miserable but everything after that point is just back to to normal wukong like i it's back to you know really good fights really good uh cinematic kind of uh bosses really good kind of just like i like stories in general jaren i i know it's a kind of like a cheap 
ish um like storytelling tactic to make you invested in a like a storyline i guess but i love it when you kind of get like these you know flashbacks to the past some story stuff happens and like you know it it is part of someone's backstory so it seems for the most part like you know inconsequential but then later on you meet somebody else from that backstory and you're like oh neat it's 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 cool to see this character outside of that like flashback and cool to see what happened to them however yeah. many years later i i like that at mm-hmm. the very least mm-hmm. oh man that but mm-hmm. uh so i guess this might be fairly obvious but just to confirm so you haven't finished the game correct no i have not finished the game though okay. i think i'm about like probably like halfway through yeah because i know the game okay yeah like where i am the game it it seems like things are wrapping up i've and if i'm going by the MacGuffins got i'm also like halfway through the game right yeah okay that makes sense Mm -hmm. okay but in terms of i guess what i'm also kind of curious about too matt Mm -hmm. is um has your i guess combat repertoire uh evolved in any way since we last spoke or are you has combat relatively stayed the same for you I think in terms of, like, actual combat, it has not, like, you know, substantially changed. But I think what starts happening in, uh, I guess, like, this chapter, and I'm hoping onwards, is that you start getting gear that is more relevant to certain play styles. Hmm. Where, like, you know, you're getting gear that, hey, you can start doing stuff with, you can start inflicting, um, like, you know, a specific status ailment on an enemy. And then you get other pieces of gear that are like, hey, when an enemy has a particular status ailment, you'll do like this bonus effect to them. Or when you're like in this particular stance, your attacks will like differ in this way. Like, I don't know. I think like the, the items now are getting a lot more interesting for me. And I, I'm doing a lot more kind of like scouring to see what's going on. Okay. That sounds cool, Matt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So do you think you'll be finishing it anytime soon? Or do you think something you you can wrap up this week? Or are you still going to let it simmer a bit? Jared, I'm really hoping that I'm going to uh, finish it soon. I think the thing that's kind of throwing me off is that the chapter I'm in right now, chapter three, is already bigger than like chapter one and two combined. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if like this is going to, this is like one of those cases where, you know, like in a lot of games, like the center part is the longest and i'm getting a lot of um character and like information like i guess like dumps in this chapter so i'm actually wondering how long the following chapters are going to be i'm wondering if it's like a case where you know you do that like really big center chapter and then the following chapters are all like very fast paced very short type things right okay Mm mm-hmm and so that's Black Myth Wukong yes. yet again. Mm-hmm. Uh, still enjoying it other than that one area. Other than that one area. Yeah, Jared, I'm hoping I'm going to get it done because I I want to finish this game before, <laughs> before I grab Gundam Breaker because I feel like I won't finish this game if I grab Gundam Breaker before it. Fair enough, Matt. Uh, Matt, Gundam mm-hmm. Breaker looks pretty cool too mm-hmm. where I'm also uh, kind of tempted, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I don't know, Matt. I should probably also finish uh, Armored Core. I'll get to it eventually. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Get to it eventually. Mm-hmm. But uh, Matt, mm-hmm. another thing that happened this week was it caught me off guard, even though it was announced previously. But Matt, we got a double dose of Nintendo Directs, technically. Yes. One in a indie showcase and then followed up by a partner showcase. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. once the indie showcase finished, I thought, oh, okay. I didn't realize the partner one was coming up. But should we start off with the indie showcase at first? Yeah. And Matt mm-hmm. was pleasantly surprised to see, uh, I believe it was Jimbo and Matt. I mm-hmm. uh, started off with some Bellatro and it introduced us to a new update, the Friends of Jimbo, which added, I believe, four customize uh, or four cosmetic mm-hmm. um, face cards that you can use in Bellatro based off of other. I don't want to say indie classics, Matt, just because the first <laughs> card uh-huh. uh, cosmetic they showed was the uh, Gwent or the Witcher one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, Geralt is joined by Dave the Diver, Among Us, and Vampire Survivors, where. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so this update was ready to jump back into Bellatro. And then I realized, Matt, that 
I'm trying to, you know, finish the highest difficulty, the gold stake mm-hmm. for the deck that has no face cards. And Ooh. that's the only thing the cosmetics, um, oh, you know, well. affect. So haven't seen them yet in game mm-hmm. where the only time I've seen them is during the loading screen when they'll briefly flash <laughs> a card and then load into the next round. Mm-hmm. But Matt, you have, have you checked out this update yet? This minor update since uh, the no. major ones coming. No, I haven't checked that. this update okay. out yet. So... I want to run this by you because when mm-hmm. I toggled it, I thought this was pretty weird. So we have new cosmetics. Again, as I said, the Witcher, Dave the Diver, Among Us, Vampire Survivors. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the each effect specific uh, suits in the card or in the deck. Oh, so you'll yeah. only see the Witcher ones uh, if you toggle it for your spades. You'll only see Dave the Diver if you toggle it for your diamonds. Among Us, you'll only see if you toggle it for your hearts, and then Vampire Survivors only see it if you toggle it, it for, you know, the clubs. Is that is that locked to certain suits, or do you pick what suit you want it to be? Nope, they're locked to certain oh, okay. suits. Mm-hmm. So I felt I thought that was kind of weird because, um, if you want all your friends together, you have to kind of, you can't just say I want everything to be. The Witcher. It ha- mm-hmm. It's either I only want my spades to be the Witcher, and then everything else either normal or everything, else, or that's when I have to turn on the other games for each of the other suits. So that mm-hmm. that kind of threw me off a bit. Yeah. But in terms of who they grabbed for their initial friends, uh, Matt, mm-hmm. wh- who, what other indie all stars or notable gaming all stars do you think they can grab for, let's say, uh, more friends of Jimbo? I mean, the first one that I think of is Dead Cells. I feel like that yes. could definitely go in. Maybe Shovel Knight. Shovel, I feel like hmm. Shovel Knight should have been Wave One. Matt. Yeah, probably. Given who you know what Shovel Knight means to. Um, I just indie games as a whole, but <laughs> Jen, I really that? hope that next uh, indie showcase they do another one of these, and I really, really hope that this is where they they like put something about Silk Song. <laughs> uh, that, mm-hmm. are we ever gonna see Silk Song? I don't know, Jen. Like Silk Song, I think it's Silk. Okay. Compared to like something like I don't know, like Duke Nuko, Silk Song being like an indie game for me means that it can just pop up whenever the hell it wants. Like, but I, I don't want it to because I love the the meme that Silk Song has become, and I mm-hmm. I don't think it's gonna be more than, than than I don't think I'm gonna get more enjoyment out of Silk Song coming out than I will out of Silk Song. Just being in like dev hell forever. Fair, fair enough, Matt. Mm-hmm. But moving on, anything else from the indie showcase that caught your attention, Jaren? I was kind of interested at um <laughs> the Neva game, uh, which is really only because I think the main character is named Alba, and I feel like I'm at least obligated to check that out. <laughs> you have to, Matt. You have mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. I mean, like other than that, Jaren, I was also kind of a uh, Interested in morsels, um, that kind of like bug game that's kind of like a, I don't want to say like a twin stick shooter, but it's kind of like an over, you know, like a, like from the top, like kind of like action-y game. And it looks interesting. I, it almost like looks like it's a combining um, the play style of like, you know, like a twin stick shooter and something like Pokemon by like how many right. bugs there are in it. Or seem to be like, you know, what they're doing with the bugs. Not totally sure if I'm like reading that right or not, though. Yeah. Uh, I, I, did, I wasn't really sure what I got from that game, Matt. But it did look pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Matt, you know mm-hmm. what threw me off specifically about the indie showcase? What was that? I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but the Power Wash Simulator DLC <laughs> was during the indie showcase, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Matt? Mm-hmm. I feel like if you're collabing with Shrek, Shrek should uh, bar you from being part of an indie showcase, and that should have been a uh, partner direct at that point. I mean, I guess I don't. Jaren, I honestly don't really know what like. I guess like partner direct is I guess just more major companies than like what yes. indie showcases, but I don't know. I think 
I don't remember seeing Shrek himself in the trailer. Fair. So maybe, you know, that's enough to make them still be, uh, you know, an indie. Fair enough, Matt. Fair enough. But Matt, Mm -hmm. you know what really got me excited? What is that, Jaren? Our, I guess, newish, newer look at Date Everything. Mm -hmm. And I know, Doug, you know, your overwhelming sense of uh, existential dread should be the obvious um, call out and what should appeal to us in our 30s. But Mm -hmm. then Mm -hmm. have to give it up. To Textbox Chan, I feel like that was that, mm-hmm. that was such a good goof that I'm sort of bummed that it was given away during the direct. Mm. Where do you think that there can be? Because I forget how much the how many dateable objects these said are going to be in this game. Uh, I believe it's fifty plus. But mm-hmm. do you think there is? one more meta goof along the lines of text uh, box Chan uh, that they'll include in the state sim. I wouldn't be surprised. Like I could see something like, like a computer file being like, you know, dateable if they're going to do something like a uh, text box. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what other like kind of like meta ish stuff they can do. I would have said like another piece of the UI, but I wonder if that like is already covered by, by text box Chan. So good, man. I'm I'm really actually looking forward to this. Um, one thing that was also announced that sort of threw me off because it's been on my wish list for so long that I didn't realize that it wasn't already out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Matt, it was Peglin. Yeah, I which, thought Peglin was definitely on Switch already. Because for me personally, this was on my Steam wish list and Shortly after it was shown on in this indie direct, I got my email notification that hey, this is out now, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, that that's kind of strange. But that mm-hmm. also a game right up my alley, saying the right things to appeal to me because that mm-hmm. you know me, I like Peggle uh-huh. and I like roguelites. Mm-hmm. So obviously, if you mash those together, I'll probably like this. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else, Matt, from the partner direct? I mean, Jaren, I I like that Wobbly Island is on mm-hmm. uh on Switch. That is such a good one of those like kind of like just meme kind of uh games. I don't really know what to call this kind of game. Like, what would what would Goat Simulator's kind of like genre be called? I uh, I believe that's pretty close to Physics Sandbox at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I guess like yeah, Wobbly Island is like a I think, like, a very, very good multiplayer physics sandbox. Right. Mm. And I know we're kind of jumping the gun a bit here, Matt, but Mm -hmm. uh, specifically from the partner direct, speaking about the physics sandbox, Mm -hmm. um, the new SpongeBob SquarePants game, a.k.a. Patrick's (laughs) game, Uh that specifically being a physics sandbox, so smart, Matt. Yeah, that that is... That hits very, very well. Where... In another life, I was really into SpongeBob, and as mm-hmm. I grew up, I kind of lot. I feel like I really, I went. I don't want to say graduated, but I went. My path was SpongeBob to Adventure Time to uh, Anime Degeneracy. Where <laughs> uh-huh. I'm still part of me is still glad that SpongeBob is within the cultural zeitgeist, and to see Patrick get his own game, but then for it to kind of be based around the chaos of a physics sandbox. Matt, that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. I'm more inclined to check that out just because that's definitely in character. At least the Patrick that I know from my youths and Uh maybe not the Patrick of today. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. something else that stood out to me, Matt, was a new entry in, I guess, the Coffee Talk franchise franchise now. Oh, okay. Uh, Coffee Mm -hmm. Talk Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And I... I hate to admit it, Matt, but I've had both Coffee Talk 1 and 2 installed because of Game Pass, and I think their licenses lapse, so now I don't have access to Coffee Talk anymore. Sure. What are these games? Me. Like, I don't, I don't really... Is this just like a visual novel, or... No. So, Matt, mm-hmm. it, I believe it's something like... Have you ever played 
Valhalla? I mean, I've seen that game a lot. I've I've watched some, you know, Hollow Talents play that game. Right. Mm-hmm. Where it is one of those, I believe, visual novels, but you're kind of chatting, learning more about all these people and having their lives interwined mm-hmm. uh, with one another in a way. So again, having the Tokyo aesthetic added to that, uh, definitely up my alley. I know we're recording pretty late, but Matt, mm-hmm. not gonna lie, drinking a coffee right now. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Uh-huh. Uh, but I think that's mostly what stood out to me. Other than Matt, Pico mm-hmm. Park. Man, Jared. I, I, what's <laughs> up? I always want to play Pico Park. I don't know enough people to play Pico Park with. Uh, I've played Pico Park park a few times and it's generally something i do enjoy but matt Mm -hmm. it have you ever played i guess you haven't played chain together yet no jared i will never play chain together i i already don't like um that kind that genre of game that i I, i'm not gonna do it in a co-op setting where i feel like i'm usually playing p the few times i've played pico park Mm-hmm. was when I have been dealing with coworkers. Yeah. Just because this was a team, more so a team lunch bonding activity time mm-hmm. where I feel like I'm, I'm at my limit when I play Pico Park because if I feel like I was playing with people I was closer with, uh, <laughs> I, I'd get a lot more in my feel <laughs> at that point. <laughs> but you, uh-huh. you have to... When playing in a work-related uh, environment, you have to keep that level of professionalism. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like with us at our group of friends, if we ever played Pico Park, um, <laughs> I'd be pulling my hair out where <laughs> uh-huh. I would never entertain the possibility of playing chain together <laughs> with friends. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Matt, before we move on to the partner direct, anything else from the indie direct? I mean, I, I'm always excited to, whenever uh, they show stuff for Metal Slug Tactics. Because, uh, you know, I, I like me a tactics game. I like me the Metal Slug franchise. So that's, you know, right up my alley. Jordan, I feel like I should play Pizza Tower. But, like, I, I feel like I, I'm still not <laughs> going to yeah. go into it. Yeah, that's something that I'm kind of... I was really into the idea of Pizza Tower, but then... It's one of those, oh, I should probably just play uh, that Wario platformer <laughs> to get my itch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But moving on to the Partner Direct. Yes. One of the earlier announcements, I believe it was probably the first announcement during the Partner Direct, mm-hmm. uh, was one of the newest, I guess, titles from Digital Eclipse, which is uh, Tetris Forever, yes. you know, to mark the 40th anniversary of Tetris. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And alongside having this collection of different Tetris games and having that new, I believe it's a multiplayer mode that, you know, switches from the different, you know, aesthetics or visual yeah. styles of Tetris. Mm-hmm. But the thing that kind of interests me the most is that documentary aspect, you know, just going through the history mm-hmm. of Tetris, the interviews. And this is kind of in their wheelhouse, you know, following Atari 50, the anniversary uh, celebration or the making of um, Karataka, where I do like that Digital Eclipse um, and some of their latest offerings are exploring this, you know, half preservation, but half celebration through documentary um, for, and just interview footage to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that. I think with... Matt, this pains me to say, but with a lot of retro games, Uh I'll play a bit and say, I think, oh, that's neat, but never Mm -hmm. really, that's never really a selling point to me. But when Uh you combine it with the documentary aspect, I think that's a more tighter package to me where, Mm -hmm. you know, again, with like the making of Karataka, I'm not going to play Karataka, but... I will watch people talk about the making of (laughs) Karatika. So Mm. Tetris Forever, definitely something that uh, I will look into when it uh, does come out. Yes. Matt, Mm -hmm. we saw some Star Overdrive. Yes. And (sighs) Matt, I'm sorry. Uh Mm -hmm. 
I feel like every time there's a Nintendo Direct or, a you know, one of the Direct variations, mm-hmm. I come here and be Mr. Poo Poo because, Matt, <laughs> uh-huh. some of the footage they showed for Star Overdrive, because one looks right up my alley. Yes. But, man, some of that footage was rough yeah. <laughs> in terms of visual and performance. And to top it all off... Mm-hmm. Timed exclusive at the end, Matt broke my heart. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jerry, just gotta just gotta wait until uh, you know it, it, it's the gold PC. <laughs> I love me the Switch, uh-huh. but every with every new direct, I that Switch Two announcement can't come soon enough. Yep, yep. But Matt, uh, Star Overdrive. Uh, did you have any thoughts on it, Jaren? I'm very interested in like half of this game. <laughs> Yes. The, you know, Jared, that, like, skate, not skateboarding, the, I guess, like, you know. Hoverboarding. Hoverboarding half of it looks really nice. I don't care too much for <laughs> everything else they showed, but, man, that, that hoverboarding makes me want to uh, play in that world for, for just that. Yeah, same. Big mm-hmm. same. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking about things that look rough, I'll go simulator. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Jared, I, uh... I don't know if like that that should be on the Switch. Like, did they like they like, even limited the amount of multiplayer people you can play with to like just one other person, Two. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that should be four, I believe. Yeah. But uh Matt, mm-hmm. we talked about SpongeBob. Uh we there was a fitness boxing three announcement. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm still confused. Is Hatsune Miku bo- fitness boxing? out i think because it was every time i look on the internet nintendo tells me it's released but every time i try to buy a copy it tells me that i'm still pre-ordering it for a september release so (laughs) i am confused Uh, i don't know jaren i jaren when i look on the site it says release date july 2024 i maybe like they're doing the kind of thing where um there's another game that's announced during this indie world where it was like oh on digital release oh it was good similar digital release is like later today but then the physical is coming later in like november right like did you right. order a physical copy of hatsune miku i did not oh, okay then i don't know what's going on with your thing i'm gonna check the i'll, I'll, I'll check the east shop afterwards but matt mm-hmm. i'm on gamestop.ca <laughs> I can pre-order Fitness Boxing featuring Hatsune Miku uh-huh. for well, sixty nine ninety nine Canadian. Oh man, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that's too. Matt, I love me Hatsune Miku. That's too much, right? Yeah, that's a lot, Jared. And like, I doesn't this like you know with the new Fitness Boxing game is doesn't like Fitness Boxing three was it have a different and like probably like better uh, UI to it or like you know set up to like the actual boxing because like i remember when i was watching the fitness boxing three i was actually kind of impressed by like what they were doing <laughs> with the uh yes. the motions which was very different from what i remember in all the hatsune miku uh motions <sighs> matt you're, you're playing the hatsune miku <laughs> premium <laughs> let's, oh, let, let's face it. because yeah as you said when i saw the fitness boxing three my tummy hurt because uh-huh. i knew when i finally bought Hatsune Miku Fitness Boxing. That's the inferior version. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. Yeah. Unless you want the Vocaloid tracks, which I, mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. else from the Partner Direct stick out to you? I mean, the Capcom Fighting Collection yes. 2 is, I guess, like the next really big thing. Uh, Where, Matt, mm-hmm. internet, wild for this one. Yes. Where I'm legit surprised along with like a lot of people i saw reacting to this that the marvel versus capcom collection comes out i believe this month Mm -hmm. where to also unveil capcom fighting collection 2 uh pretty wild man Mm -hmm. pretty wild but i i have to admit when Mm -hmm. i saw power stone 1 and 2 yeah alongside uh project justice oh yeah mm, oh man that Mm -hmm. might might have to dip into this one i (laughs) I know a lot of, <laughs> I was going to say a lot of our fighting game friends, aka Mark, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, they have the affinity for Capcom versus SNK, but my affinity relies in Power Stone and Project Justice. Oh, man. So. Jaren, I, I'm just excited to see the the characters from, like, Project Justice come back to life. I, I guess also Power Stone as well yes. come, come back to life, because it's, uh, it's good to see them again. 
You know, other than because like I think I, Akira was in is in Street Fighter now. Yeah, Street Fighter. She was DLC last wave of DLC for Street Fighter Five. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really excited to get my hands on that. Not I know this goes against the whole oh with like a retro collection. I'll probably not touch. Like, you know, I'll play it for a bit, say that's neat, and move on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think with the Capcom fighting collection specifically, just because as much as I'm bad at fighting games, mm, love me some fighting games, Matt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we'll probably play through some arcade modes here as well. Um, but Matt, mm-hmm. uh, Sub 7. Jaren, I am really surprised to see that on on the Switch. So yes. I, don't, I don't know... I never I guess, guess actually like played a Civ using a controller. And I wonder mm-hmm. how that experience is. On the Switch. Oh, yeah. Specific, also specifically, yes, 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 on the Switch. On the Switch. Which, you know, <laughs> doesn't help in, 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 in much ways. Oh, man. Moving on, looking at some other quick hits right now. Not My Sims, the cozy bundle. Oh, totally man. forgot My Sims existed. <laughs> Jaren, I fully also forgot about My Sims. I... Jordan, I'm kind of excited at My Sims. Mm-hmm. Um, because like I remember really liking the Wii version of these games, and yes. I'm wondering if they hold up. Matt, uh, when when I look at some of the announcements here, you know, alongside My Sims, we're looking at what was it? Epic Mickey was also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, shown off as well. And are we just kind of at that point where they're we're just porting whatever we can to help? <laughs> Uh, sustain the life of the Switch I mean, Jared, before the Switch 2 comes out. <laughs> Tales of Graces F remastered is on here. Uh, what else? I mean, they're bringing, bringing over Funko Fusion and bringing over I guess like EA Sports is like, the stuff is new. Yeah. Well, we have the Castlevania Dominus Collection, Dragon mm-hmm. Quest 3 HD Suka 2D Den, remake. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, Jordan is Alti Armageddon. something new. That is new, right? I believe so. Not uh-huh. That looked cool. That looks cool. But I don't know if I'm gonna play it. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. With a lot of uh games of this caliber right now. Uh-huh. Um I don't know. Again, as as bad as this sounds, I'm I love watching me a Nintendo Direct Matt. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those at this point I <sighs> As rough as the sounds, I do see this as a marketing beat where I know, especially with a partner direct, it's yeah. okay. That's cool. Where else is it coming out? Just because. Yes. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm far more likely, especially since it's like a Koei, Koei Tecmo joint. And yes. I, I feel like I, I trust them enough with like, it looks like an action-y type game mm-hmm. that I, I might have a, you know some fun with that. Okay. But Matt, mm-hmm. before we get to the last announcement, anything else from the partner uh, showcase that stood out? Um, I mean, I think like one of the just before the last announcement was like the new Rune Rune Factory game. Yes, Jaren, I I like the Rune Factory series. I I wonder like what is really like going on with it anymore because I feel like it's not hitting either of its like very strong like you know what do you call it farming beats or it's it's like action beats all yeah. all that that well but like it has enough like i guess like for me pedigree behind its name that i i'm curious enough about it but i don't want to drop fair. 79 canadian dollars on it big fair mm-hmm. big fair same with me and fitness boxing hot uh-huh. Miku edition oh man Games are expensive, Matt. Yeah. Speaking expensive. about games being expensive, mm-hmm. the final announcement for yes. the partner showcase. I mm-hmm. uh, didn't think it would happen, but Yakuza Kiwami uh-huh. uh, coming to the Switch. <laughs> and Matt, uh-huh. I, I like me the Yakuza games. I need to mm-hmm. go back to uh, the f- series as well, just because uh, I do have seven in my Steam library that I should probably mm-hmm. get around to before I get to uh, Infinite Wealth. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Matt... Jared, this is this like a good jumping in point for the Yakuza series? I will always tell people to start... Because this is technically Yakuza 1, right? Okay. I'm not sure, Jared, because like 
Jaren, I've never really gotten into the Yakuza series. Okay, fair. So I never know, like, really what's going on with any of its games. I just see some, like, wild stuff happening, and I'm like, oh, cool. Yakuza's doing it again. This is probably going to ruffle some feathers, but (laughs) as someone who's not super into, like, I I respect the franchise. Mm -hmm. Uh, If someone asks me what should we play, I will tell them you should play uh, Zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should play Kiwami, Kiwami 2, and then read <laughs> about 3 to 6, because that's what I <laughs> I did, Matt. Mm-hmm. Where, I don't know how I feel about this being the showstopper, uh, or the final announcement, where I think people were surprised, because honestly, Matt, mm-hmm. it's one of those, oh... Is this going to run <laughs> decently? Yeah. On the Switch, where I, I'm, I'm curious, but mm-hmm. at the same time, with all these announcements, it's we, we we kind of saw this with the Switch in general. Of uh, all these heavy hitters came out on the Wii U, uh, didn't necessarily find the audience they were hoping for, so <laughs> they were brought over to the Switch. Mm-hmm. Where I wonder how much of that is also being applicable to some of the games we're seeing this late in the, um, you know, in the Switch's lifespan of how many are of these games are being released right now just to kind of milk the last dollars that you can uh, before being put on or ported, upgraded onto the Switch 2 as well. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, again, that's how I'm currently seeing this the partner showcases in 2024, you know, through that kind of cynical view of, oh, that's cool. Uh, Where else is it coming out? And will this be re-released in the next two years for the Switch 2? But Matt, overall, how did you feel about our double dose of Nintendo showcases? I mean, I was surprised at the double dose. I think like you, I didn't, uh, I guess like process what they meant by like indie partner showcase. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought this was like you know very middle of the road uh, in terms of like the Rex. It I, was fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jordan, I think it I'm just fun. too spoiled by that that last one, that like last big one. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was your annual one that you have to do. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, that's your E3, not E3 one. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. until we see a actual. Uh, Bonafide Nintendo Direct proper. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that one will be the Switch Two announcement? Uh, I mean, I don't I, think mm-hmm. you really have room for one this year. So, I mean, I could see one like you know just before Christmas, maybe, and mm-hmm. that's like the one where sure. you like you decide to throw maybe throw in the Switch Two. I don't actually. I don't know. Maybe throw in the Switch 2 there, or like, you know, you throw in like some kind of like best of Switch bundle for, for, right. for Christmas. But fair. I, fair. I, Jaren, I, I don't know how to, to plan marketing. So that's fair enough, Matt. Mm-hmm. Matt mm-hmm. did not know Squirrel with a Gun came out. So, oh, man. uh, gonna look into that. Matt, that's $24. <laughs> Ooh. We'll look at that eventually. Mm-hmm. Jaren, you kind of, but, you know, wish list that and then I'll wait for. Steam to notify you that hey it's on sale now. Thanks, Steam. Matt. Mm-hmm. Every time I get a uh, email saying, Oh, this is on sale, uh, I look, think good sale, and then continue on with my day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same, 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 same. Uh but Matt, mm-hmm. those were the Nintendo games, uh the Nintendo showcases this week, but mm-hmm. we still have one more bit to get through. Yes, Jaren. I am bringing the Don't Match Me this week. Yes. And, you know, as always, we the, the rules of the Don't Match Me never change. One of us is going to ask you, you know, questions. And then we are going to provide an answer. All you have to do is, you know, as the player, not match the answer that we give. Uh, you know, I think we've established that the normal mode is don't match the person giving the question or... Yep. Yeah, giving the questions, and then our hard mode is don't match either of us when we're uh, for our answers. Yes, but Jaren, this week, in honor of Tetris Forever or Tetris's fortieth anniversary, I am doing a Tetris don't match me. Ooh, okay. Hmm. And you know, Jaren, I think you know we should start very very broad. Uh, so my first question for this Tetris based don't match me is just name any Tetris game. Any Tetris game at all. 
There, there's a bunch of them that uh, you can pick from, but you just need to name one of them. Okay. So, name any Tetris game in three, two, one. I have picked Puyo Puyo Tetris. God damn it. <laughs> we got well, him. <laughs> hard mode isn't that hard this week. <laughs> oh, man. We got him. We got him. Matt. We got him. Uh-huh. <laughs> At first, I was going to say, I don't even know if it's an actual, I didn't actually know the name. It was some N64 variant that I wasn't actually sure was I think was it was just real. called Tetris 64. <laughs> no, it was Wetris, an actual game. I thought Wetrix was something else. I thought it wasn't a Tetris game. Yeah, that's that, that's what threw me off as well. Yeah, Wetrix. Yep, Wetrix is not a Tetris game. <laughs> Wetrix is not a Tetris game. So I thought I, I'd do the the safe answer of Puyo Puyo Tetris. Matt, I should have just said Puyo Puyo Tetris too. You got but him. You got me, Matt. You got, you got me. I'm out. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, the, the listeners are, are still in so they can keep playing. Yes. And Jerry, you should, you should keep playing too. Because... I'll try, Matt. I'll try. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there are... A lot of games that fall into the kind of like same genre of Tetris or have been inspired by Tetris. So, you know, I thought, you know, give them a shout out as well. So my second question is name any other game where stuff falls from the top of the screen and it's your job to clear them. Okay. So, you know, any any other game that, you know, follows that like kind of like same same kind of like Tetris methodology. Okay. So name that game in three, two, one. I picked Meteos. Matt? Hmm. I went with Super Puzzle Fighter. Ooh. Jaren, I wanted to pick Lu- Lumines, Lumines, but I don't yeah, know Lumines. how to say that word properly. <laughs> Fair enough. I say Lumines, mm-hmm. but I also mm-hmm. don't know, Matt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting a little bit more specific here. So my third question for this Tetris Don't Match Me is... You know, there have been a lot of kind of changes to Tetris ever since it came out. I want you to name any feature that has been added to Tetris since the original release. So, you know, there are a lot of like kind of things that have been added over time. And, you know, they have, you know, mostly maybe been like quality of life. They've maybe been, you know, just like actual like full changes to the game. Uh, You just need to name any one of these features. So. Name that feature in three, two, one. I've gone with the instant drop. Matt, that, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. is holding technically one? Yes, hold piece is, uh, is, is what, okay. something that's been added. I was going to go T-spins, but mm-hmm. I, I think holding was the safer Man. of the two for me. Hold piece was such a, <laughs> a controversial ad at that trip. Really? Yeah, just because of like how... Big of like a a skill change that makes is you you know you mm-hmm. now have like a te- Tetris on demand button or yes. like you know a oh oh no button to like you know right. save a piece when you when you put it down bad. I like me a good. I like hold. Mm-hmm. I like hold. I like I I mm-hmm. need hold as a crutch to put uh, my my two Tetrises back to back. Yes. Mm-hmm. And of course, I guess in a Tetris base, don't match me. You can't not have this question. My fourth question, which is name a Tetris block. Ooh, of course, I knew this was coming. Man. Mm-hmm. I knew this was coming. Any Tetris block. Name a Tetris block in three, two, one. I'm going with the T block. Matt, mm-hmm. had to go with old reliable, the L block. Hey, the L block. Good old L block. Always overshadowing the J block. <laughs> yeah. Uh, love me a good L block. Was L block the one that won that like Game Facts uh yes. character of the year? Okay, okay. Yep. I can never remember if it's L block or or the line piece. Classic, Matt. Classic. Always a classic. That's a classic. And you know, I guess we were talking about the Tetris uh, documentary before, uh, but now I'm going to move into the I guess like Tetris mockumentary of the uh, Tetris mm. movie. For the last question of this, I uh, don't match me. I just want you to name a country that was in the Tetris movie. You know, they kind of went all over the place in that movie. All you need to do is name one of the countries that they went to. So, name a country in three, two, one. 
trying to catch the you know the the sneaky people here, and I'm going to go with England. Ooh, Matt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did they go to Japan? Yeah, they go to Japan. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Went with the safest route there because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was unsure. Uh huh. Jared, I also I when I wrote this question, I initially was going to pick Russia, but then I remember yep. that it wasn't Russia during the movie, and I, I was kind of iffy on you know whether I should uh pick like Russia or the USSR, so I I just avoided that whole country. Right. Fair enough, Matt. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. But Matt, mm-hmm. I I. Unfortunately, struck out real early, so hopefully our friends did not. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. thank you for bringing Don't Match Me. Matt, mm-hmm. you slid that uh, eye block into place <laughs> and got you a Tetris. So good yeah. job, Matt. Mm-hmm. 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 And with that, Matt, mm-hmm. I know this wasn't tech really a sub. Maybe you can make it a sub one hour, but a pretty good episode of the mistake zone mm-hmm. this week i think it was just over an hour probably once i'm done editing it hopefully matt mm-hmm. hopefully I want to thank you as always for joining me this week and editing this podcast and also bringing don't match me uh for i guess this week yeah well, thanks man and as always jaren i want to thank you for you know hosting bringing us this uh some like you know Fortnite and nikkei news and I look forward to you falling into the automation uh, automation well. Hopefully, Matt. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. want to thank Summer. Uh, <laughs> Matt, uh-huh. let's pour one out for Summer. Pour one out for Summer. Uh, Matt, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm scared I'm going to have a cold soon because th- this weather transition period, not the best, Matt. Not mm-hmm. the best. Jared, I keep sleeping with my window open and, you know, it's getting a little bit cold at night. So, you know, I might, I might be there soon, too. Not great, Matt. Not great. But Mm -hmm. until then, please take it away. This has been The Mistake Zone, and we're all out of summer 2024.